But let me ask you this. Are you praying to God? And I'm not talking about just praying for the food or praying for the green light to turn green whenever you're late to work. I'm talking about are you praying to God for mercy, for grace, for cleansing, for peace, for direction? Let me ask you this. Is prayer your first thought? Do you believe that prayer makes a difference? When you pray, you have to have faith that God will hear you. Time and time again, we hear examples, and we have it in our Bibles of God's people calling out to God. And what happens? God hears them and gives them the answer prayer. One of the elements of having an intimate relationship with our Jesus is prayer. We need to not only be praying when everything's going good, we need to be praying when everything's going bad. A prayer can be a cry for help. A prayer can be a call for worship. Church, let's call on the name of, the, of our God. Let's seek him. Let's share his name with everyone around us. And as I studied for the sermon, I was like, and it really spoke to me and I've had so many chapters in my life where I cried out to God and, and, and God responded. And I was like, which one, which one should I use? And, and God revealed this one to me. It's the story of my sister-in-law, Serena. And I may have shared it before or not, but uh, it's a story that is uh, it's amazing, right? So let me set it up. So I'm at my work and my wife calls me and She's hysterical. She's on the phone, and I'm like, what's going on? I can't understand her. Like, hey, uh, like, what is going on? Uh, Serena passed, passed out, and we don't know what's going on. We got to run to the, we got to go to the hospital right now, like right now. So I'm like, it sounds very serious. So I head over to the hospital, and as I head over, my, house, my heart's pounding, and just this burden on, on, on top of me, like, I don't even know what's going on. I don't know if she's okay. What's going on? I get there, and some people are in tears. Some people are just quiet. They can't even speak. And as we wait and wait and wait, and it just feels forever as we're waiting, the doctor finally comes in and tells us the issue is that um, she has a tumor. The tumor has gotten so big that it's pushing against her brain. And this is, this is very, very serious. This is very serious but we'll do everything we can in our hands. So we wait and wait again. And as we're waiting, things get worse. And things get worse. And things get worse. She can't breathe on her own. And then it gets to the point where she just is not responding. Her brain is just not responding. So the doctor comes and tells the tells family, like, I'm sorry, but we've done everything that we could possibly do. Um, I think it's best that you get the family together and say your goodbyes. I just recall just seeing my brother-in-law get his boys together and be like, hey, boys, I think it's time for you guys to go and say goodbye to your mom. Man, that moment right there was just unbearable, just to witness that. And then my wife reminds us, we need to, tells me, we need to pray. We need to pray right now, right here, right now. We need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. So we get on our knees and we pray. And I'm mean, talking about we cry and we cry for mercy. We cry for grace. God, we love you, God. We love you. We love you. God, we trust you. God, we, we trust in your will, Father. We trust in your will that everything that's going on is according to your will. But Father God, please, if you could, hear our cries for mercy. Hear our cries and give healing to Serena. 
God answered our prayer. Her, her brain became responsive. And as the time went, man, this is how, God, this is how good God is. They were able to go in and take the, take the tumor out. Like, this is a very serious thing, right? They take the tumor out. And they, they told us right beforehand, even if we could take it out, it's in a place in the, in the, in the brain where it's going to affect her vision, her speech, her mobility issues, so she may not even be able to see, speak, walk. But let me tell you this. With a minor complication of being able to walk out of that surgery, surgery, she was healed. Isn't that not amazing? Come on, man. Come on. And like if you, I just saw her yesterday, and like you would never be able to tell anything happened. And every time I see her, I'm reminded of God's goodness and God's grace. And as we just worship and, uh, and this sermon here, it's going to be about just worshiping our God for all that he's given us. Verse 3 and 4, the writer tells us of why he's crying out to God. It says, the cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. And as I read it, I was like, I need to look up some definition to make more sense to me. So cords of death means to be surrounded by no way out of a, to escape. Imminent death. Distress, extreme anxiety and pain. Sorrow, feeling a deep distress caused by loss or disappointment. The psalm doesn't tell us what exactly he was going through, but it's clear that nothing in the, of this world could save him. It was only God and God only that could save him in, the, in this situation. And then, he, and then he tells us what he did. What did he do? He prayed a simple prayer. Lord, Save me. But he prayed it with all his heart. I remember when I first came to, to Waves, I didn't know nothing about nothing. I didn't know who Jesus was. I didn't know that people lived to a thousand years old. I didn't know any of that. And, you know, I joined a small group. I think Bobby's here. I just saw him. I joined Bobby's small group. And I caught on right away. Like, when we go to the small group, everybody kind of talks. And then at the end... Oh, who wants to pray? Who wants to lead us in prayer? And I used to hate that. I used to hate it. So I already knew, like, at 7.45 or 7.50, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go to the restroom. <laughs> and by the time I come back, by the time I come back, somebody's going to be chosen already. And the reason why I hate it is because I, I thought that whenever you pray to God, that you had to be perfect. I thought that when you pray to God, you had to use his big words. I thought that when you pray to God, you had to pray for like 5, 10, 15 minutes. Man, that's not the case. Bobby caught on right away. He pushed me. And that's not it. I wrote this. Prayer is the bridge to your heart. Prayer is simply having a conversation with our God. Speaking to him out of your heart. Lord, I'm, I'm struggling with this. Father, I thank you for this. It's simple conversation. And no matter if it's a 10-minute 10 10 minute prayer, 5-minute prayer, or three words, as long as we pray to our God with our full heart, it's all that matters. Let's keep going first, 5 and 6. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. I love this because he paints a picture of who God is. Right? The verses say that God is gracious. God is righteous. He's full of compassion. God is a protector. 
God is a savior. If I were to ask you, how do you describe God? Once you experience God, you'll be able to explain how great God is. And something that came to mind as I read this was um, me and my wife, as you, if you don't know, we love food. We're foodies, as they say. We love food and we like to try spots all the time. And my wife, bless her heart, every time we go to a new spot, she has to bring up her phone and then bring up this review and this review and then this review. This one's good and this one's bad. And sometimes we, based off of those reviews, we go to that restaurant. And sometimes we go to spots when our friends recommend it. But it, it is not until you go into that restaurant and try that food for yourself that you are able to say, hey, this food was good or this food was bad. Isn't that the same thing with God? It is not until you taste God's goodness that you are able to say, hey, God is good. Man, God is good. What do you do when, when you experience something good? You want to share it. Hey, man, you need to go try this restaurant, bro. Like, what? Hey, man, you need, you need, you need to turn to Jesus. Man, Jesus is good. What? What do you mean? Why? Let me tell you. Let me tell you what he did in my life. It becomes so much easier, right, when you trust on him, when you obey on him. And when, you, when he leads you, he will take you to those spots. And now you would have a chance to speak of his goodness to those around, him, around you. Let's keep going to verse number seven. Return to rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. So we go from, a, from the writer being stressed and in anguish to being able to rest as God delivered him. True rest comes from God. A couple of weeks ago, we, uh, we moved to a new house. And um, we decided that, hey, that we need to get the house painted. So then we kind of saw some prices. I guess Melissa's laughing over here. I saw some prices, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. That's a lot of money. I'm like, and my ego kicked in. I'm like, I'm a little cheap sometimes. I'm like, I could do this myself. Forget that. And then we only had like nine days to move in. I'm like, nine days, that's more than enough. So after work, I load up my truck and I head over to the house and I start painting and taping. And then before you know it, it's three o'clock in the morning. Oh, I gotta go home, I gotta get some rest. I gotta go to work the next day. And then again, and then again, and then again. Day eight came, Selena's mad. The movers came. They had to put all their stuff in the garage. I was exhausted. I'm like, I'm tired of painting. I'm tired of seeing paint, and it's still not done. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so tired of it because I had a lack of sleep. And when I first finally got to be able to sleep, I just felt good. But this right here, this is talking about true rest. See, this is talking about physical rest. He's talking about our spirit needs rest. <clears throat> On Friday, <clears throat> On Friday, we received news that um, Selena's nephew passed, uh, passed away. <clears throat> and um, as I've gone to their home, I'm seeing a, a mom that's in distress. Her spirit is hurting. <clears throat> I've seen a mom that can't sleep, that can't rest. Her spirit is in, it's just in agony. And that's not something that sleep can take away or food can take away or drink or water can take away. That's only something that God can take away. God is the only one that can give her peace. I can go up to her and say, hey, everything's going to be okay and I'm sorry. And th that is not going to give her rest. That rest comes from God. And I want to say if you are, or find yourself in that moment right now, and reach out to God. 
Do not hold it in. Reach out to him. Call on him. God, we need you. I need you. I need you. Help me, Father. Give me peace, Lord. Give me rest. And God will give you rest. Another verse that I added that's not going to be up here is going to be Matthew 11, 20 to 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. Amen. Verse 8 through 11. He's speaking again to, to the Lord. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I trusted in the Lord when I said, I am greatly afflicted. In my alarm, I said, Everyone is a liar. Again, the writer confirms that he was at the point of death and confirms that God saved him. He trusted in the Lord when he was greatly afflicted. And because of his faith and trust, he was delivered. We have to have that same faith and trust in our God. Verse 12. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. The writer is reflecting on what God has done for him. He's asking himself a question. What should I give back to my God? For his grace, for his mercy. What do, I, what do I have to give? I don't have nothing to give. But he says, cup of salvation. Meaning, to express thanksgiving to the Lord for saving us. Calling on the name of the Lord. And then he says, I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. What God desires from us is to seek him. For us to seek him. And to have an intimate relationship with him. And as doing so, will we feel that with a desire to worship him, to pray to him? We will be filled up with a desire to share his name with everyone around us. And as I get ready to close out, let's go to verse 15 through 19. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Truly I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my, as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Here the writer just closes out the verse, giving us a picture of how we are to live our lives. He reminds us that this home, this place, this earth, this is not our true home. We are called to be with our God, Jesus, in heaven. Amen? He also says that we are to be a servant of God. Are you serving God? You know, as we talked about in the past right here, when we pray to God, God's going to speak back to you and he's going to ask you to do things. Are you willing to be that, to the, be that vessel? Are you, are you willing to go into India, to Belize, across the street, in your jobs? We have to be servants and willing to serve where he calls us to serve. 
We have to be someone that's, who's, who's giving praise to our God. Man, I know it's, I know it's easy to forget, and I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of it. When we wake up, it's just another normal day, and we just forget. We just become accustomed to it. But we only have life because he gives it to us. We need to be living a life where we're honoring and praising our God daily. And as I asked the band to come up, I wanted today to be a day of remembrance. As you sit in your chairs and you hear me, I want you not to hear me. I want you guys to hear God. Think back of your life, of all your chapters. Think back of all those chapters of where you started and where, where God has placed you. And some of us like, hey, I'm just starting right now. Guess what? This is a picture of where God's going to take you. You just have to be obedient and follow God. I want today to be a, a day where we worship our God. But we say, thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Even though sometimes we may not understand it, we still praise you, God. So if you can just join me and stand and let's worship our God with everything we have. Amen.